Hello, good evening everybody. It's been a while. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, just another video to let you know I'm, I'm okay. I'm sorry I haven't made one sooner. Um, this is my second take. My last one went way too long and I want to fit loads in. Um, so I'm going to just try and fit lots in very, very quickly. Um, I shall start with websites. I wanted to plug two websites that I've been frequenting recently. Um, that is pipesmagazine.com. Uh, which has been around for a couple of years, but it's really uh, sort of snowballing now, and it's you know uh, it's getting better and better. So I've been on PipesMagazine.com a lot. Uh, it's really good that the industry has a website totally dedicated to pipes and pipe smoking, and they can advertise on. And it's got some really good quality content and uh, editorial articles by people like Greg Pease. Really, really love it. So you probably know it, but I just thought I'd give it a plug. The other one I wanted to plug was the International uh, Petersons, uh, the International Petersons Pipe Club, I think it's called, and it's not just for Petersons uh, pipe collectors, but you know anybody who has or wants to have a Petersons pipe or is interested in Petersons pipes or blends uh, can go there. And they're also linked in to the company, so if you have a question you want to put to the company, you can through, do it through the website. So I wanted to give that one a plug. Now, of course, I do still frequent things like Puff.com. I don't write on there so much, I just tend to, uh, you know, glaze over, uh, glance over posts. Um, I also, of course, like Brothers of the Briar, and I also like Smokers Forum, uh, but as I said, those two uh, that I just mentioned, the Peterson's Pipe Club and the PipesMagazine.com, I'm frequenting a bit more, and I thought you might like to know that. Maybe you wouldn't. Um, what next? Okay, uh, tobacco, because you love it when I talk about the tobacco. Very, very quickly, uh, rediscovering some blends, uh, that I, some favourites that I, I popped. Uh, one of those is uh, Cajun Cake. Uh, really lovely, very strong. Definitely uh, strong to very strong or medium to strong. And it's a cake and it's lovely and it's Virginia and it's Cavendish I think as well, or possibly just Virginia Cavendish and Perique and smells a little bit, reminds me of red wine. Uh, now I'm on the dry these days as I often do, uh, so I'm not having that with a glass of red wine, but I'm still enjoying it nonetheless. I find with a lot of these strong blends, uh, the, the tip is to tame them down with a filter pipe. That's my secret. Lovely stuff, Cajun cake, strong, red wine-ish, beautiful, sweet, robust cake, love it. Okay, the other one I just uh, popped a tin of recently, which is one of my favorite all time ever, and that is Rainier's uh, Long Golden Flake. I think it's called 171 Blend or number 71 Blend, and that's by uh, R.L. Will, I think. Um, or Will, uh, who makes Rainier, and he's from Germany, and he makes top stuff, he makes Salon as well, and he makes some pretty amazing pipes too. I love this stuff. Now, if you've never tried it, it's essentially very similar to Golden Sliced. It's a bit like the Rich Man's Golden Sliced, which I also love. So, I just thought I'd plug that one again, because it's so great. I love it. Another one I wanted to plug was uh, Bracken Flake by Samuel Garwitz Bracken Flake. Now, I honestly say this is probably the strongest tobacco I've ever smoked. Uh, I picked it up from Judd on eBay, and it's December 2004. Um, it's stronger than Irish Flake, I think. It's stronger than uh, 1792. It's stronger than Brown Number no. Four, Brown Twist Number no. Four, which is a rope by Samuel Galwith. Um, but it's very, very nice. And as I said, a secret to that: smoking in a filter pipe. Now, on a similar note, I haven't opened this yet. I've showed you this before, and that's Grouse Moor. Um, there are two types of blends when you talk about Lakeland, and that is these dark, flu, fire cured, oily, um, yeah, rich, heavy, uh, sort of Tonquin style blends like this. And then there's this kind of very other Lakeland, perfumey, potpourri, sweetish, honeyish, floral Lakeland. So these kind of two blends, Grouse Moor and Black and, Black and Flake, are both Lakeland. Um, or Kendall if it's by Galwith Hoggart, uh, but Lakeland I believe if it's by G uh, Samuel Galwith, uh, but these two different strains are quite different. Some people get confused about this. Both are Lakeland, but um, 
both are quite different. Dark, rich, oily, fire or flute cured, I believe they say, and sort of much more floral and perfumey, and this is quite a light blend. Very, very nice. Uh, I wanted to talk very quickly about blending. Um, I could have made a whole video on that, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to fit it all in this video. And that is blending. Now what I do to blend, and I've said this before, is I just blend uh, to get to improve blends. I don't want to throw away any tobacco. Um, this is my own plum cake, and then what this consists of is essentially a 100 gram tin of McBaron's plum cake, a little bit of Seattle's Pipe Club uh, plum pudding, which is kind of heavy uh, Latakia blend with a little bit of plum uh, casing. And there's also a, a tiny pinch of uh, Danish in there uh, and a tiny pinch of cherry, which I had left from a previous jar. So it kind of just makes my own plum cake and makes it plummier and makes it heavier on the Latakia. So it, it works. Uh, a similar blend I could show you is this one. This is Burley and Bright. This was a tin uh, that I got off eBay and it was a... Uh, Burley and Bright Virginias, and it had a slight coconut, slight um, vanilla, very, very hint casing on it. And I mixed that with Prince Albert, and that just, so I keep it, you know, in, it, in its genre. Uh, so that just kind of makes it, uh, makes the, the Burley and the Prince Albert it, have a slight bit more depth and complexity to its, its flavour. And, you know, it, it just works really well. So that's very much how I blend. I try not to, to reinvent the wheel, I just try to, to kind of improve the blends. Now this is another one that I made myself, I call it Latakia Mix, but it is, is in fact my own Billy Bud. And the reason it is my own Billy Blood, Billy Bud is because I had this vintage tin I found in a corner shop of Trost uh, Aromatic Cavendish and that is essentially a Burley Virginia uh, blend with a kind of hint of chocolate and, and vanilla flavour. Now it was a vintage tin, it was about 15 years old and it was very nice. I do like these Dutch Cavendishes. Uh, their, their emphasis is on the burly, but they're not overly cased. Uh, and it was very nice, but it needed something else. And so I put in a big dollop of GLP's Odyssey, a robust uh, Latakia blend, and two broken um, Robusto cigars that I had, Dominican Republic Robusto cigars that had broken, and I chucked it in. So we got two Dominican Republic cigars in there, uh, a big dollop of GLP's Odyssey, and uh, a lightly cased, very good Dutch Cavendish. And it really creates Billy Bud, essentially. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's better, maybe it's not, I don't know. That's the blending. I wanted to talk about Dunhill. I wanted to make a video about Dunhill, but I'm gonna do it all in one video, as I told you. Now, Dunhill, I do like Dunhill. We all love Dunhill. This is my Dunhill. This is my Group 5 Dunhill, um, and it's very nice. But I read something on PipesMagazine.com and somebody said, well, Dunhill, it's essentially, the best way to describe Dunhill is above average. I do think Dunhills are great, but, you know, there is a lot of hype about them. And, and that's, I just, when I read that, I thought, you know, Dunhill's great, but essentially I would sum them up as above average. And that's about it. They're a high grade pipe, above average. This is my 1965 Dunhill Fishtail. Very nice. Obviously, it's got a fair bit of wear on it because it's 1965. This one is 1981. They both smoke very well. Nothing exceptional. They just smoke very, very well. So that's my take on Dunhill. Um, I personally don't like the fact that their 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 bits tend to be quite flat and quite wide, sort of sort of wide this way, and they're quite thin this way. Uh, I, I personally don't like the bits on them that much. I find the fact that they take an aluminium tube means there's um, a, a relief here uh, so that the tube doesn't go back up into the pipe and I get rid of the tubes and then I sand it down. Uh, this one used to gurgle like hell and I had to sand it, I had to file it down quite a bit on the inside and, and now it's, it smokes a lot better and doesn't gurgle as much. So you know I personally find a fundamental flaw with, with the bit um, but more in particular with the aluminium tube uh, in the middle. I, I find that does a couple of things. It also, if you leave the aluminium, aluminium tube in, as you're cleaning it, it kind of wears down the inside of the bowl just here uh, as it pushes up and down. So, you know, 
Uh, if, you, if you take the aluminium tube out, it's easier to clean. Uh, if you leave the tube in, not only does it wear down here, but there's also a lot of gunk that gets caught on the outer side of the tube and the inside of the shank and the stem. So, you know, I actually find the aluminium tube, uh, although invented for uh, a good reason, to, to, to help uh, uh, the, the flow uh, of the draft of the smoke uh, through the pipe and also to to help it, it, it stay clean easier, uh, or to be cleaned easier, whatever way you want to put it. Personally, Dunhills are great. They're just above average to me. There you go. That's that's about it. A uh, new blend that I picked up and I haven't tried yet. Uh, Samuel Gawith's Perfection. Uh, light Latakia English blend with a hint of uh, vanilla. Not a big casing guy, so uh, I don't know. But I think I like it uh, because it's a light Latakia and I like that. And I'm trying to support Samuel Galwith who are trying to get into the, the market here. Um, so I have a couple of blends that they're selling, but only a couple. And I would like to see them sell a lot, lot more. Anyway, there you go. That's about three videos fitted into one. Tobacco update blending update, my quick thoughts on Dunhill, which I love, but hey, they're above average. Let's not get crazy about this. Lastly, pipe update. Aldo Villani, made in Italian, made predominantly for, and solely for, I believe, the American market. Picked it up at a price that was next to nothing. Um, it's a beautiful champagne finish. It's a beautiful billiard, almost a champagne shape tapered upwards, uh, it's not a champagne shape, a, a brandy shape, so it's fat here and thin here. Um, very nice, just wanted to see what you get for the money. Very nice, I love my Italians, there you go. Pipe update, Aldo Villani, $29 I paid for that. New, unsmoked, quite a few big fills on it, but a lovely colour, very nice. Had to get my file to it because it was a little bit blocked off here, so I had to file it down. Easy to do for the straight pipe, there you go. I'm still alive. Good to see you all again. We'll speak soon. I look forward to hearing from you. Bye bye.